Steve Berline, 17 years in the NFL, a Pro Bowl as well. He's been around this game for a long time, was on that Cowboy team in 92 that won a championship. So let's talk, Russ. I'm a Russ fan. I do think quarterbacks that move and are mobile tend to have shorter careers and erode more quickly. I don't think he's washed. Do you think Russell is? You know, I, I don't. I agree with you, Colin. I think that this situation will rectify itself here to some extent. You know, I, I really felt that uh, Russell's play had fallen off the last couple of years and that, as you said, the mobility part of it that does, I agree with you, tend to shorten careers. But I still think he's got some gas in the tank and some juice left, uh, and it will show itself. I do think he's pressing right now. I think that he and Nathaniel Hackett are going through some growing pains. Yes, uh, He's missing opportunities to make plays, as we saw in that last play last night. Um, you know, the, the bottom line, though, is that he knows and he understands that he's got to play better. I think he will get better as the year goes along. And uh, how good that'll be, I don't know. But I, I do think he'll get uh, his level of play at a, at a higher level as we go along here. B- by the way, Brady struggled early, but Brady brought Gronk in. And the Bucks had a much better offensive line, and he was still seven and five. We forget this. He and Arians, as you know, Steve, they really battled until they had a bye week. Um, now they had a Mike Evans, an established pro, Chris Godwin. He brought Gronk in, and their O line was better. But I think sometimes people forget that Brady thing was rocky. He forgot what down it was in Chicago. He was barking at his O lineman. Do you think one of the things that bothers me when I watch this offense, they never move the pocket. That bothers me. Well, what do you see schematically? Is there anything that you think they could do? Well, I think first off, one of the things that, that you didn't touch on that I think is going to be a huge challenge for them moving forward, the loss of Javante Williams is going to be massive yeah. for them because I think Russ, uh, the play action and the, the first and second down passing in run situations, whether you're moving the pocket or just giving that hard stretch play, uh, play action where it forces those linebackers and safeties to take a, take a step up and that gives the quarterback a chance to push the ball down the field a little bit. He's going to be missing that because uh, they, you know, Melvin Gordon still can play, but he's not Javante Williams. He doesn't scare a defense like Javante Williams does. So that's going to be a factor. But I think you got to get really, really creative with a quarterback like Russell Wilson, and it's a getting to know you process. Nathaniel Hackett, even though he studied Russell Wilson, I'm sure a lot over this offseason, especially, uh, they still have to figure out where he's most comfortable, where he's most effective and most efficient, and find those opportunities, create those opportunities for him. I do think guys like Cortland Sutton and and uh, Jerry Judy and, and Hamler, those are really good young receivers that will flourish as uh, Russell Wilson gets more comfortable in this offense and Nathaniel Hackett learns how to use Russell in better ways. You know, I talked to Joe Burrow this week. We watched Tua, his hands fenced. It freaked people out. It should. We saw a player last night for the Colts, a running back. He wobbled. They should take him out for a week. I'm for that completely, maybe two weeks. Go back to your career. Burrow told me there's been second halves where he didn't remember everything. 17 years, Steve, you got popped more than once. What was your level? Um, did you forget plays? Was it fuzzy? Did it, did it, you have lasting effects after 17 years? Um, many times throughout the course of my career, for sure. And this is obviously back before the concussion protocol was anything close to what it is today. But uh, there were several times where a coach the day after watching film would ask me what I was thinking on a certain play. And I literally would say, I don't remember that play. I don't remember that series. And it, that, that it ended up being something that they would laugh off and say, oh, yeah, you know, that's right. You got your bell rung the day before or the play before. So uh, that makes sense. But one real quick example, too. I, when Lou Holtz first came to Notre Dame, I got absolutely drilled by Cornelius Bennett on a bootleg. Yeah. And I came over the sidelines. They cleared me to play another series. I went out there. didn't go very well. I came to the sideline, and Lou said, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you out, son. You're done for the day. And I said, Coach, I'm fine. Just let me get the cobwebs out. And he said, well, son, you, 
you may think you're okay, but you're calling plays from your high school playbook, and we don't know those plays. <laughs> so you're done for the day. So. Wow. Yeah. No, I, I do think, Steve, you can't hit at OTA. You can't tackle. The helmets are better. There's no shot. There's ejections. I do think the game is safer, but I also think athletes are bigger, stronger, faster, and more punitive. So I, I think it – listen, the NFL is trying to make it safer. There is a level of – regulated violence that exists right like you knew the risk no doubt and 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 that's going to always be that way there is going to be risk it's part of the game uh, i think the awareness though continues to improve uh the paranoia to a certain extent uh that now has been created especially through this tua situation uh will will end up being long-term more healthy for the players and i think one of the other things that is really really key here and i'm involved with one company that's kind of pushing uh, forward with this is the technology will continue to improve uh, and the things that are going on really behind the scenes technologically will make a difference as well. And those are those are really key developments that have to continue. I said going into the year, Aaron was going to have to um, pivot to be a more patient Aaron Rodgers. He's got two rookie receivers. Uh, Alan Lazard's more of a three. This has to work or this is not a championship team. Now, Romeo Dobbs had a couple of drops last week, and Aaron did go back to him later. Take me to your career. The frustration sometimes, Steve, that you would know the offense. Here come some kids. They don't, but you need them. Is that a tough relationship for a veteran quarterback? It, it really shouldn't be. And that, that's, that's, I think, that's on Aaron Rodgers. And, and I, I, we all love Aaron Rodgers and what he can do with the football in his hand. But it really shouldn't be. There is going to be a curve, a growing curve. Uh, I can give you an example. Musin Muhammad, when he came in with the Carolina Panthers, he was a rookie. Uh, you know, he, he had the same kind of issues. We knew that this kid was incredibly talented, was going to be a great player. But he had to fight through the growing pains and learn how to play at this level and learn how important every single play was that those drops, you can't just shake them off and move past and you have to eliminate those especially in the key situations but you stay with them and my my mentality always was build these guys up keep telling them you're going to come back to them i'm counting on you still you're going to come back and make a play for me later i'm not going to go from my read if my read takes me to you i'm coming back to you because you, we have to make that play if we want to win the game so that's the mentality i think aaron Rodgers has to have as well these are going to be guys that are going to win games for him down the stretch he's got to keep going back to him and get him through this little early stage learning uh developmental period listen there's one thing to be a backup in the league there's another thing to be a backup for america's team your takeaway on what you've seen from cooper rush i, I love what he's doing it, it really reminds me of myself again going back to 1991 when troy aitman got hurt uh, i came in and uh, I hadn't played in about a year and a half after my, my time with Al Davis and the Raiders in Los Angeles, but I got a chance to play and went five games in a row without losing, including a playoff game in Chicago. And uh, there were guys like Skip Bayless out there that were <laughs> trying to create a quarterback controversy in Dallas at that time. Same exact situation as what is going on right now. But uh, I think Cooper understands, as I did at the time, that this really is – uh, another guy's team. My opportunity is going to come somewhere else. But for me, it was Troy Aikman. For Cooper, it's Dak Prescott. Cooper's doing a phenomenal job managing all this stuff, but he knows his job is just to do the best he can do right now, find a way to win games, and then turn it over to Dak when Dak's ready to go. How did Aikman handle it? He didn't like it. He did not like it at all. And, he, <laughs> and it, was, it was really tough. I mean, Jimmy Johnson had some tough decisions to make. And it's documented in some of the books about that period where Troy really wanted to come back in. But Jimmy said basically, hey, Troy, you know, we were six and five with you. We're <laughs> four and oh with this guy. We're going with this guy. So uh, it ended up working out for both of us. I got a chance to go to Arizona as a free agent. And Troy, we, yeah. we won a Super Bowl the next year with Troy. Yeah. Great seeing you. Love your stories today, Steve. Steve Berline, thank you so much. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.